does Christianity pose any threat to a nation where people are becoming Christians? Well, we would like to think, no, that we're bringing blessing and peace and joy and that the gospel teaches us to love one another as Christ has loved us. And so it ought to be uh, a real positive change, a real benefit. And, and you'd wonder why would anyone ever be scared of it? But the truth is Christianity is a threat and we get to see what, at least one way it is in our passage today as we continue on in the book of Acts. Paul's been in Ephesus, it's been an amazing two years. Things have been happening. Two million people have come under the sound of the gospel in two years. And there's been real change as the folk religion and the magic items and spells have been disposed of. 50,000 uh, shekels of silver's worth of um, of idolatrous uh, material has been destroyed in obedience to God. Uh, Deuteronomy 18 talks about how God detests uh, the magical practices and the superstitions and uh, witchcraft and things that goes on often hidden in a culture um, and people have come to the gospel and it's made a real change and so they've acted well we get to see even greater threat to the society today as we continue on we're in verse 21 after these events paul resolved by the spirit to pass through macedonia and achaia and go to jerusalem after I've been there, he said, it's necessary for me to see Rome as well. After sending to Macedonia two of those who assisted him, Timothy and Erastus, he, uh, he himself stayed in Asia for a while. About that time, there was a major disturbance about the way. For a person named Demetrius, a silversmith who made silver shrines of Artemis, provided a great deal of business for the craftsmen. When he had assembled them, as well as the workers engaged in this type of business, he said, Men, you know that our prosperity is derived from this business. You see and hear that not only in Ephesus, but in almost all of Asia, this man Paul has persuaded and misled a considerable number of people by saying that gods made by hand are not gods. Not only do we run a risk that our business may be discredited, but also that the temple of the great goddess Artemis may be despised and her magnificence come to the verge of ruin, the very one all of Asia and the world worship. When they had heard this, they were filled with rage and began to shout, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians! So the city was filled with confusion and they rushed all together into the amphitheatre, dragging along Gaius and Aristarchus, Macedonians who were Paul's travelling companions. Although Paul wanted to go in before the people, the disciples did not let them. Even some of the provincial officials of Asia, who were his friends, sent word to him, pleading with him not to venture into the amphitheatre. Some of them were shouting one thing and some another, because the assembly was in confusion, and most of them did not know why they had come together. Some Jews in the crowd gave instructions to Alexander after they pushed him to the front. Motioning with his hand, Alexander wanted to make his defence to the people. When they recognised that he was a Jew, they all shouted in unison for about two hours, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. When the city clerk had calmed the crowd down, he said, People of Ephesus, what person is there who doesn't know that the city of the Ephesians is the temple guardian of the great Artemis and of the image that fell from heaven? Therefore, since these things are undeniable, you must keep calm and not do anything rash. For you have brought these men here who are not temple robbers or blasphemers of our goddess. So if Demetrius and the craftsmen who are with him have a case against anyone, the courts are in session and there are proconsuls. Let them bring charges against one another. But if you seek anything further, it must be decided in a legal assembly. In fact, we run the risk of being charged with rioting for what happened today since there is no justification that we can give as a reason for this disturbance. After saying this, he dismissed the assembly. Well, it's a fascinating thing as Demetrius and uh, some of his uh, contemporary craftsmen realize exactly the threat that Christianity is posing to, uh, to a whole lot of things. What threat does Christianity pose to, uh, to the people there? Well, it's, it, the big one they're concerned about is the threat to their livelihoods. 
because if Christianity takes off and the worship of idols and particularly the goddess Artemis, uh, who was uh, notoriously worshipped throughout Asia and particularly in Ephesus, was under threat, then they were going to lose a lot of their business because they made their whole income from this uh, from this lie, and, and they recognise it. They, they, I mean, they're not. Um, they, they know that it's a threat to their income. They, they, this is why they're causing all the confusion. But they will bring up, you know, the affront to the goddess herself as uh, the way they're going to argue in front of the people because. Uh, really, it's all about the money. And, and it's interesting that Christianity does pose a threat to some businesses, doesn't it? If lots of people were to become Christians, we'd have uh, businesses that would uh, would tank. The, the brothels would shut down in Ingleburn if everyone came to Christ. Uh, the, the sellers of various uh, trinkets, the, the businesses related to uh, the worship of other religions and you know the, the, the book writers who write the, the new age sections that fill our bookstores. If you've been down to QBD Books or Dimmix uh, in the last few years, you'll see they've got a significant uh, new age and religious section which is uh, all opposed to Christianity. It's all about lies and self-help and uh, about the new age and mysticism. Uh, and, and, and so, yes, Christianity is a real financial threat. And if a whole nation's based on uh, the income of those kind of things, so really Christianity should threaten more than that. It should threaten a lot of the capitalist industry because there's just so much junk and consumerism in our society that we can be part of. But as the gospel takes uh, heart root in our life and Christ is Lord, he's Lord of our wallets too and we start to see that some of the junk that we have around us is is just a waste and foolishness and uh, yeah and so Christianity really does pose a, threat. It pose a threat to not just the financial security of the system but also to the peace. I mean here is a right in a major city that's caused the whole city to shut down. Everyone's in confusion they are running here and there. In fact, astonishing in the middle, isn't it? They, uh, some are shouting one thing, some another, because they didn't know why they'd come together. They just, we're, we're angry about stuff and blah. <laughs> so they, they're gonna get stuck into it. And, and it is a mess, uh, but it just shows the, the poor foundations of the community, the society there that they all have been living with this tension that they believe different things, the Jews are there, and, and presumably they'd be on side with the idol sinfulness of the idolatry. But the thing is, Paul has never made an attack on Artemis, and the courts are going to realise that. Good on the city clerk who uh, calms the whole situation down and says there's legal recourse, we can sort this out and stuff. Now he's, he's uh, oblivious to it. He says that it's no threat to Artemis. Artemis is worshipped by everyone and we're the custodians and, and so there's no threat. They haven't been blaspheming or anything like that. Well, they have. The, uh, the truth is that really the gospel has because the attack that... Uh, gods made by hand are not gods um, it's true it's true and it applies as much to Artemis as to anyone else it's interesting they refer to uh, Artemis and the image that fell from heaven and that this, the city of Ephesus is a guardian of I did a little bit of research into what that was because uh, I had no idea uh, Artemis is the the goddess of the hunt and uh, the protector of young women uh, she uh, was supposed to be the daughter of Zeus and uh, she had a whole ra range of nymphs who followed her, who they were all uh, having random affairs with the other gods and people in, in the mythology. But she herself was an eternal virgin. She begged Zeus for that gift. Um, but this image that fell from heaven was a sculpture sort of picture, a relief of Artemis herself. We even know the name of the artist who created this image from heaven. His name was Canidius. His name was recorded. The Craftsman Guild knew who exactly he was. And so they knew it wasn't really from God, although the city clerk seems to be confused about it. Such is the power of lies when uh, it's controlled by a, a group of very vested interests uh, that they can convince anyone even of nonsense like this. And uh, they, they were really trying hard to protect their business interests. 
I, I mean, they could have if they had thought about the truth of stuff and, and acknowledged their own complicity in the, in the myth and the lie, uh, have repented and used their skills for other things. So it's not like Christianity had to undermine the economy of the area, but obviously it's easier for people to do what they know and that they're making money off of and uh, cash in on the tourist trade that's afforded by religion. I mean, religion provides a lot of income for lots of places, places like Rome and the cathedrals in Europe and stuff. People go on tour and see these things and uh, they go and see the shrines. They go and see the Taj Mahal and they go and see the Mecca and you know billions of tourists are going to see these in, in their lifetime. So it's not small money, but Christianity is true. And if it does pose a threat, it's a good threat uh, because there are things that are wrong that need to be ended. Lies need to be exposed. And uh, people need to, in their repentance, come to accept that there's going to be change. And though, yes, Christianity is teaching us to love and to be kind and to care for one another and to reach out with the peace of God to other people around, we've got to see that it will bring change. And not be afraid of that. Often we see our friends and think, well, if they became a Christian, they'd have to give up that relationship or they'd have to make some serious changes in their life. Well, that's okay. Uh, that's a good thing because uh, you know, we might be convinced that, well, they're happy and so on, but actually God's not happy and uh, they won't have eternal joy because sinful behaviors and stuff will always lead to disaster in this life and in the next and so we need to be praying for our city and praying that we be bold because, you know, we understand that there could be things that are threatened and people who feel threatened by the gospel going forward. But that shouldn't stop us because Jesus is Lord. He is the king and his glorious gospel is going forward and saving lives. And for the sake of people coming to know God, uh, we ought to upset the system, not deliberately. Paul and the others weren't trying to do that. They weren't trying to create riots in the city. But we've got to realize that the gospel will have these kind of impacts. And so, yes, Christianity is a threat. And it's not a threat because it really is about bringing people back to life and to right minds and to right relationship with the King and Father of us all, the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for the challenge of your word to be courageous and to uh, preach your gospel willingly, uh, no matter what the effects might be. Father, we know that some people are going to be disturbed and create problems and react against Christianity because their livelihoods are threatened and because of the changes that it brings. But Father, we pray that that would never stop the gospel going forward. Please do your work. Help us uh, to love people in the midst of it, to never be the cause of the affront. Uh, that people have but to uh, may, may that be the gospel alone but help us to be uh, powerful and persuasive in the way that we speak and we pray that you would change this nation you would shake it from its sinfulness from its idolatries from its consumerism from uh, the godlessness and the hedonism the materialism that surrounds us please turn those hearts and minds of this nation to you and we pray that you would help us to be our part play our part in that change in our local area and beyond in jesus name we pray amen god bless everyone catch you again for another devotion tomorrow